Gerard. Good morning, everyone. As we know, earthquakes produce ground vibrations that can be very damaging. But how much do we know about how this ground shaking is manufactured? And what is this jelly doing in a presentation about earthquakes? <laughs> this is a ground shaking factory. Once a rupture is produced at a given fault, seismic waves travel through the rock for several kilometers at high velocities. At some point, some of these waves reach the surface at the exact moment when we start to get nervous. My research is about side effects, which occur when some of these waves pass through soil deposits. These deposits act like jelly on a plate that is shaken, producing more severe vibrations on the surface of the jelly than on the plate beneath it. Note how the ground shaking recorded on soil is amplified relative to the one recorded on rock. This is not an exaggeration. In fact, these two motions were recorded six years ago in Wellington during the Kaikura earthquake. In this event, nearly 30 buildings were seriously damaged and side effects played a key role in that. The good news is that this phenomenon occurs right beneath our feet. That means that we can go to the field, perform some tests to characterize the soil, and then use this information to create computational models to simulate ground shaking before the next big earthquake occurs. This will allow us to know in advance which areas will experience more severe vibrations, in which case we will need to design more robust buildings and infrastructure to withstand this violent shaking. If we have enough confidence in these ground shaking simulations, this will be a powerful tool to create more resilient cities. But the truth is that at this point, more research is needed. A key question is what is the level of complexity that we are able to incorporate in the modeling of side effects and we need to incorporate? Certainly, simple models are easy to characterize, but the accuracy and precision of their predictions could be very limited. On the other hand, more sophisticated models are able to reproduce side effects much more realistically, but their large number of parameters requires a huge level of information about the site. And with limited information, these models probably are not at low for the best result. To figure out which is the best approach, we really need to test our models. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our side effects laboratory. Actually, you're standing over it, since we're using the whole New Zealand, this beautiful factory of ground shaking, to evaluate our models in a robust manner. In the first step, we are going to simulate hundreds of earthquakes that occurred in the past that were recorded at multiple stations across the country. In the second step, we will consider alternative models for capturing side effects in our simulations. And then, in the third step, we are going to compare our alternative predictions with recordings of these earthquakes over a wide range of soil conditions. For this evaluation, we are going to use nearly 2,000 observations of ground shaking, an unprecedented amount of data in these types of studies. This analysis will allow us to improve ground shaking simulations in New Zealand and worldwide, and build confidence in this advanced computational tool, which I'm sure can help us to create a more resilient future. Thanks.